Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial today, and this is pretty much applicable in all versions of Unity from the past and toward the future. So this is going to be showing you how to take damage in a 2D game and affect, say, your health. You can do this really simply. All I've got in my scene is I've got a platform for my character to walk on and I've got the 2D character from the Unity standard assets and you can get the standard assets from the asset store and then you can get the 2D character which is the character robot boy that you can get and you can just drop it in. You want to check on your character that it does have a rigid body 2D. In this tutorial example specifically, he does have a collider for his main body and a cylindrical collider 2D for the bottom. Now, for the sake of this, because we're going to do a trigger event, you want to might want to make the actual box collider which encapsulates the full object bigger, just so that we don't have multiple colliders because sometimes it can get in the way of how we interact with the code. So all I've got is one box collider, I removed the other collider and just made this bigger by scaling up the Y value. It's got a rigid body 2D, which is good, and that's what we need for that. I've got a bomb sprite here which is which also has a box collider which you can see here it's set to is trigger because that's something we're going to interact with and on its 2d it can be whatever you want for this it's static so it doesn't move anywhere on your player again you might want to make sure if not already that it's got a tag of player and you can add that if you need to by clicking on the drop down and clicking add tag so once we're here um you've got everything you've got as, as you can see here my player's ready to go with the bomb and the floor. I've got a simple UI of health and then I've got a number and I'll show you how I've set that up. I've got a canvas here and I've just got text which is text so you can right click in your project panel go UI and create text and when you've done that you can position it at the top so if I show you as an example we press F we've got this health I've got it here I can position it in the top corner you can set its anchor point to the top left or wherever you want to position it, you can change the color, whatever. That's not something we're going to actually edit. You can duplicate this text component and you will create another component, which will be another text box, essentially. And this will be our value that we're going to update. So we can start it at 100, let's say, but we'll update it in script. So it doesn't matter what the value is as of now. What we want to do to get started, if we've got the basic setup complete, we'll go back to our main scene here and we want to create two scripts. One script to control the character's health and one script to control the damage that we'll get when we enter the bomb. Okay, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call this, let's say for instance, mobile health controller. And then what I'll also do is create another script in C sharp and call it mobile damage controller as an example so what we'd expect is on our health controller that we've we could create you can right click create empty and if you create empty you'll get an empty game object you can right click at the top click reset and you can reset the transforms and just rename it and this is just a way to hold it without it you know hiding away so we know exactly where it's going to be so we can click on the health controller and add our health controller script we can select our bomb and add the mobile damage collider to our bomb. Nothing happens as of now. So we need to actually do something. We'll open up these two scripts in Visual Studio. Once you've done that, I'll knock the curly brackets down and get rid of the starting method in the mobile health controller. So in there, we want to start off by using the UI collection. So we'll say using at the top Unity Engine dot ui with a semicolon so this is we're going to update the text as we go along so what we want to do is that when we update our health we want to update the actual ui that we've got so for this specific instance we need to give the player some health so we'll say public float player health with a semicolon and then we want to in square brackets write serialized field and then say private text and then let's say health text as an example, so the serialized field just means that we make a private variable pub, um, sort of visible in the inspector, but it's still private to this script because we don't need to do anything else with it. So we're just accessing the text component because that's what we want to update and we're just giving it a name so we recognize it. Then under here we can say public void update health with two brackets, then two curly brackets below. And we'll say that health text, what we just created here, which is our text box for the UI, dot text 
is equal to player health dot two string open brackets in quotes and we can put a zero in there and then put a semicolon and what this means is that we're saying that we're going to update the health text dot text to that text box with the player health and because the text box is a string or a series of characters and not an actual float value we need to convert that player health float value to a string value so we can just shove it in that box without it complaining and zero just means that it's just going to be a solid number. If you wanted it to be a decimal place value, you could use 0.0, .0 like that. But this is just the way that we do it. So that's all well and good. For the health, we'll update it when we ask it to. We'll go into the damage script and I'll do the same. I'll just get rid of the two starting methods. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something similar. So we'll have two square brackets and serialized field. Then we'll say private float and we'll call this something like bomb damage and then we're going to want to reference that health controller by doing that we'll do the same thing serialized field in square brackets then we'll say private and then we want to reference our script which was called mobile health controller and then we'll just give this a variable name of health controller for the simple sake and we'll add a semicolon on the end now here we want to do our trigger event so when we walk into it we're going to want to do something so we'll say private void on trigger enter 2d in this instance when i press tab it completed it for me so then you want collision uh, co then you want collider 2d in brackets with the collision that we're going to be looking for and then we can say in the curly brackets if collision dot compare tag dot compare tag open up brackets in quotes then we'll look for the tag of player then we'll have two curly brackets below and we'll call them different method like damage but it keeps trying to change it but it doesn't matter we'll have it like that and then under here we'll say void damage with two brackets and then two curly brackets below and we're going to say that for the instance of this we want to say our health controller dot player health because that was a public so we can access player health from our other script you can see player health was public so we can say player health because we made the reference up here we'll say dot player health and then we'll say equals health controller dot player health again minus our bomb damage with a semicolon so that just means that the player health the health controller dot player health which is here in our other script is equal to itself minus the bomb damage and that's just the way that we've got to reference it on the right hand side of the expression then what we can do because we want to we've done that but we need to update the ui so the player can see or the person who's playing the game can see oh right we've updated the health now so we'll say health controller dot update health which is the method we created in the other script and say when we've walked into this bomb it's going to disappear or blow up or do whatever we can say this dot uh, game object dot set active and in brackets we'll say false with a semicolon so it just means it'll turn it off once we're done so i'll go through this is that we've got an on trigger enter 2d and in the brackets a collision 2d and then we're saying that if we're low when if we are the player when we collide we're going to run the method called damage and damage runs just when we collide once and it will update the health that found in this health script and it will do take away the bomb damage that we specified in this script which we can in the inspector then it will call this method update health which is public and it will just update our ui and then it will just turn the collider or the actual bomb or object that we've got off entirely so it's really nice and easy to do and it's really refined the way it does it so in this instance we can select the bomb you can see that now we've got a bomb damage so we can set the damage of this bomb to 10 and we can add the health controller here and then you can if you so wish you can grab the bomb sprite and you can make it into a prefab and then what we can do is we can just you know uh, like this drag this prefab out a few times and you want to check that each of your prefabs actually has the reference to the health controller because it might not and if it doesn't you can just attach that to the object we can set this one maybe to 25 at the end just as a different value to show you that it's working 
and you can see on if we go to our health controller we need to make sure that our health is whatever we want we could have it as a thousand but we'll keep it at a hundred and then you want to add the health text which is the text that we're going to update so we'll add that from our um, canvas so each of our bombs has a script and it has the health controller referenced we've got a bomb value you can specify whatever you want and on the health controller we need to make sure that we connect up the ui that we're going to update and give the player give the player some health what we could do just to make sure that say you did set the player's health as a thousand to start with just to update it automatically we could just say void start and as soon as the game starts we can say update health so if you set it at a thousand it would update that accordingly we can press play you can see the health is 100 if I go towards my one bomb, you can see that I lost 10 health. I go towards my other bomb, I lost 10 health again. And then when I go towards my other bomb, I lost 25 health that time. And there you go. That's exactly the way that you can do it. Quick and easy, simple, just with some simple triggers, you can easily lose a bit of health and uh, do some interesting things. And you could extend this by adding some you know, 2D explosion, sound effects, anything like that to make it apparent that you've just walked into a bomb. And obviously, if you want to change it so that when, if the character's health hits zero, you could do it in this update health statement. You could say that if any point that if player health is ever less than or equal to zero, then we can just say debug.log we could say game over for instance just like that and oops that was meant to be if player health is ever less than or equal to zero so if we've technically died then we can show a game over or do something move to a new scene whatever you need to do so let's give you an example quick example if i set that to 50 and this other one to 50 as well i will stop this on maximize on play because you can see down here in the inspector you'll see the game over so yep yeah, took 50 damage the other one 50 damage and game over and then from there you could quit the game fail the game do whatever you need to do bring up another ui which says you died <laughs> whatever it needs to be basically this was just a really simple way to trigger some event take some health off the player and update accordingly you can run with this and go as far as you need to so thanks very much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers